Good morning, folks, and welcome to the dock right here, Maritime Gloucester. We're between the schooner adventure, the schooner Ardell, yeah. and we are watching now. We're here to enjoy the 35th annual Gloucester Schooner Festival. I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, Maureen Elwood. How you doing, Maureen? Good, Corey. It's a perfect day. Oh, my God. You can't beat this real estate, you, right? Mean, seriously, it is a wonderful day to kick off the Labor Day weekend, and we're here on Harriet Webster Pier. Yes. And um, the schooners are starting to come in. They're going to be uh, coming in all day long, and we highly recommend you come down to see what's happening and the action that's that's going on down here. Yeah, we have the, uh, the boats are coming in throughout the day today. We have fireworks this week and the boat parade of lights, the parade of sale. sale in the mayor's cup race yeah uh, that's on sunday this so, might be my favorite weekend of the year it's in definitely Gloucester. mine I love it. I, we're sad to see the summer go but. i know but it's been an amazing summer and september is always like the sneaky great month too yeah, yeah. the waters are warmer so there's all kinds of boat action out there so we're really yeah. looking forward to sharing the sights and sounds with you today and we have an amazing list of guests as always to share with you too and our first guest is a really super amazing person daisy now yes. daisy daisy hi how are you? Hi. <laughs> welcome to now we're here we're thank you thrilled to have you on the show well, thanks and uh, daisy you're the chairwoman of the gloucester schooner festival and you've yes. been doing this for a long time. 35 years. 35 years. Tell us a little bit about what it was like at the beginning and take us up to today. The, 35 years ago in 1985, I had a schooner here in Gloucester that was chartering out of uh, this pier next door, the Morning Star. And um, we were approached by the American Schooner Association to see if we could hold a rendezvous here with Nova Scotia schooners and American schooners. And uh, we went to the Chamber of Commerce and Mike Costello said, sure, that's a great idea. What's a schooner? And uh, so, no, he really, he, yeah. <laughs> we, we, we gave him a lot of grief back then. He did actually know that a schooner was not one of those things on wheels that you push with your foot. Um, anyway, no, he was great. We got everyone together. We got a committee together. And I uh, guess I've been on the committee ever since. But so has Mike Costello. We're the two holdouts of the founders. And uh, we did have a rendezvous. It was a great event. We decided to do it again the next year. and. I guess it was an idea that kept on happening because we're still here this year. Well, this is one of the great festivals up here in Gloucester um, and on Cape Ann. And uh, so tell us about now. I mean, how many schooners are coming in? Well, the, and some are here now. If you look around the city, you look around the harbor all day long, you'll start to see it filled with more and more masts and spars. Um, the uh, difference from back then was that most of the schooners were in the small or medium size. We started getting the big schooners in when the pilot came back to Gloucester and Adventure and Ernestina, uh, and they started, um, it became much more of an event to see three sizes of schooners, and basically they're small, medium, and large. And uh, this year we have um, between 25 and 27, depending on what we're counting, some are here on exhibit, like behind me over here at Maritime Gloucester, the Sylvina Beale is up on the railway, yeah. and uh, the small Crotch Island Pinky Schooner that is owned by uh, Maritime Gloucester uh, used to be owned by Landmark School. They're, they're here. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a real spectrum. Um, they're, back then, they ran their own race, really, um, and uh, well, now the Mayor's Cup been around for a long time. The, well, the, don't forget that's different. The Fishermen's races were a um, hundred years ago, starting next year. Right, right. The yeah, anniversary but, of that is next year, yeah. and what we started was um, something that we didn't even know at the time was going to become a legacy. Um, we really. Uh, went more towards the idea of reenacting those fishermen's races year two, and that's when Gorton's gave us uh, the Esperanto Cup that we use today and we still award today. Yeah. And uh, we also started from then to bring it more from just the, the water's um, edge up to Main Street and started over the years, as we now know, we have things that involve the whole city, the whole weekend, the block party, right. the fireworks, the Mar Maritime Heritage Day, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a big retail weekend. Mm -hmm. Mike Costello, if he were here, he'd say Labor Day weekend from a Chamber of Commerce standpoint used to be just a sleepy weekend at the end of the summer, and now it's one of the highlights of the year. It really is. So take us to Sunday, and you always do this wonderful sort of play-by-play -play on the boulevard. It's just one of the best things, I think, of the Schooner oh, Festival to, to see uh, the Parade of Sail and then all those schooners well, go out. Well, it's neat. It's a gig I inherited uh, along with uh, Joe Garland. I, uh, of course, he was on the original committee, and um, he started doing the commentary for the parade, and then um, when he wanted to um, dial it back a little bit, he brought me in to help him out with it, and, um, and then I, I took it over from him after he passed away. 
What's also cool about that, by the way, is that at the end of the parade of, of schooners, the schooners go over to um, the land off of Eastern Point at Black Bass, where the Garland House is, and the family is there, and they give a big cannon salute. Very yeah, cool. I love it's that very, part. It's, it's a wonderful yeah. part of it. Helen loves that. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. It's terrific, and it's a great honor um, for a person who put so much into it all these so years. So much. Joe and Helen have done so much, especially bringing adventure yeah. Yeah. down from... Jim Sharp. And yeah, all that. that. That's a great yeah. story. Yeah, that, and you're going to hear about that a little bit later, too. Yeah. So um, after the, uh, the parade, I go in, and um, I'm a schooner captain myself. So um, we, we um, Stan and I share the, the role. I have to say he's probably the bigger captain than I am. But he's, What does that mean? He weighs more than I do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to be clear. <laughs> no, we both we we, we both share the uh, schooner Redbird, and uh, we both um, sailor and and lover, and, uh, and of course it, all these small boats, uh, any of these schooners are a labor of love just to keep them going. True, and, right? And to learn, but you know you have that yeah. body of knowledge. We've 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 sailed schooners together, Stan and I, for years, and. You know, you don't. What do you do with that knowledge except pass it on to other people? And that's part of why we do all of this. To right. there's still something to be learned mm -hmm. from. Look around. I mean, this is this is science. This is art. It's all right here, and it's the same technology as some of the oldest schooners that come here are well over 100 years old, and some of the new ones are built with the exact same, literally the exact same tools. Yeah, the exact same tools and the exact same method. Yeah. And for young people, it's such a great experience. Oh yeah. You know, it's it's hands on and it's we you talk know about it's team. Work yeah. and it's it's living with other people. We talk so about learning. interdependence and and yeah. uh, you know we talk about climate change every day now. Yeah. I mean, there's wind power right there, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, it, and it's it's served us well for a long time. Well, you know, there's uh, there's a lot to be said for the, um, the big schooners and bringing cargo just like they did before. Mm -hmm. And a couple of years ago, uh, I know that Adventure did that. Yes. Um, and there's been back and forth uh, journeys to Maine and. The, the main schooners have done that as well. I well, think it's fishing a, by hand, of course, fishing by yeah. hand was a much more sustainable method of fishing than fishing by net. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if we'll ever dial it back, but uh, oh. Joe Garland used to say that it was one of the, the worst inventions uh, other than the nuclear bomb. The net? <laughs> yeah, the fishing net and <laughs> dragger. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, what does the festival uh, epitomize for you? Is it a celebration of sailing? Is it a preservation of schooners? I think it's a... I, I like to think of it as a window to the past and the future because it, to, to use something like our heritage um, and the technology that went into building these boats over 100 years ago, the same technology is in place today. Simple machines and uh, the wind and the weather, but it teaches something to the next generation. You know, you don't uh, live to a certain age without looking towards who's going to pick up the, the uh, baton after you. Mm -hmm. And we, we want this to be a lesson in preserving, protecting, interpreting, and cherishing our resources here in Cape Ann. This is a unique area. We have so many natural resources here that um, can be a lesson uh, and a learning platform for the rest of the world. Yeah, I love that. I want to know, Daisy, where, when you first fell in love with the ocean. Well, I grew up in Essex, as, yeah. as I think uh, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I grew up in, in, in Essex. My, my dad, um, I like to say, he was launched the same year as the schooner Roseway in 1925. <laughs> really? uh, he didn't come down the way, so, but uh, yeah. uh, anyway. Well, he came down one way. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so I grew up in a, in a schooner town, but I didn't really appreciate it, frankly, until my grandmother, uh, after my grandfather passed away, my grandmother remarried a man who owned a schooner. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and it wasn't a schooner from here. He was from uh, the vineyard, uh -huh. and uh, so I started to hear the word schooner more and more. You know how it is when you grow yeah. up in a town. You might it just would pass over your consciousness that people are talking about schooners. I mean, they weren't yeah. really building many in the 50s when I was a kid, but anyway, there there we were. She was talking about this wonderful schooner and. My grandmother was born in the uh, in the 1890s, and she used to say, "And I always wear my black bloomers when I climb the rigging." <laughs> <laughs> so you must have it must be a crazy two, three, four days here for you now in a row. Yeah, it's yeah, wild. It, it's a little. I'm, I'm, we know that we're, we're I'm amped taking up at some about 15 time. today on a scale of one to ten. <laughs> yeah. but yes, there's a lot of little moving parts that go into this festival. Yeah. But Maritime yeah. Gloucester, you know, this is where we're based. And uh, the staff here is fantastic, and Michael DeCoster, he's a director. He's 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 totally bitten by the bug. You know, you'll 
You'll yeah, see. He's going to yeah, be, we'll be on yeah. soon. Yeah. yeah. He's going to be talking about that. Yeah. yeah. But we really appreciate your time, Daisy. We understand that you have to get going and start we really steering the show. Yeah. We're weekend. hoping, you know, for a song, but no, we're not. Yeah. No, that's okay. <laughs> next, next time. Right? Next time. Next time. Right. So next people show. want to learn more about the Schooner Festival, GloucesterSchoonerFestival.net. Dot net. Right? Yeah, pr appropriately named, dot net. Absolutely, right? yeah. Yes. <laughs> and uh, so, who knew? And, and, and come anywhere down. else, you know, just, um, you know, yeah. People call me 24-7. Just give me a call. If you want to know anything, you just call me up. Yeah. You have my number. Right. And the weather looks fantastic. It's going to be are, perfect. We are so lucky. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we are so lucky. Yeah. Another brilliant weekend. I mean, there's something about this weekend that's just... Yeah. Might have a little rain on Sunday night, but... It'll be it'll be so, great. It'll be okay. The <laughs> rain, we need the rain. Yeah. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> yeah, Have you fun too. this week. Thank we you appreciate for what you do. Time. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, cheers to the Schooner Festival. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thirty fifth annual Schooner Festival kicks off right now, folks, and we are hanging out down here. Uh, at the Harriet Webster Pier to share some of the sights and sounds with you and to uh, bring an array of guests talking all things Schooner Festival. So Daisy Nell, thanks once again. We'll Thank see you shortly. Me. Thank you very okay. much. Awesome, Great. Marina. Great. I know. Um, it's wonderful to have uh, to be down here for a Schooner Festival. I mean, it's this is a primo yeah, you can spot. Step up, okay. You're fine. Yeah, yeah you're, you're okay. We'll, think, we'll take it from yeah, here. Adventure right. Thank right. you. Thank you. Appreciate okay. it. Super. So we've got a, the crew from Schooner Adventure. We've got Captain Stefan Edick coming up. Awesome. Um, and uh, some folks, come on up. Good morning. Hello, Hello. how yeah. you doing? Good, Great thanks, to see you. Stefan, I'm Corey Cooper. Corey, nice, nice to meet, to meet you. you. Hey, Phil. What's up? Phil, Phil Dunn and Rick and Nelson. So Hi, I'm Corey. Nice we've got to meet you. Thanks the executive for doing this. director of uh, Schooner Adventure, Rip. Stefan Edick, and uh, Rick and Nelson, who is uh, part of the crew, and Phil Dunn, who's also part of the crew. And what we just ask if you, if, when you're speaking, you just pass the microphone. Sure, so absolutely. So we're going to start with you, Stefan. I'm Schooner Adventure, Treasure of Gloucester. Um, could give us the rundown quickly on on what adventure is and adventure is Gloucester's history in, in 122 feet of a fishing vessel. She's the, the the icon of the fisheries. She's the last dory fishing schooner in existence, um, and she's Gloucester's all-time highliner. She's a she's one very special craft, yeah. and represents an awful lot an awful lot of history. And for those not familiar with this, can you just give sort of the specs on it? Sure. Adventure is uh, is 122 feet long and 25 feet wide and 13 feet deep. Uh, she carried 14 dories and and um, fished from 1926 to 1953. Amazing. Yeah. It's a big weekend in store for you here. It is a big weekend. It's always a big weekend. This is the the one of the biggest weekends nationwide on the on the traditional sailing calendar. Tell us a little bit from the outside, Stefan, because you know we're here. We see adventure in the harbor all the time. We take for granted sometimes this beautiful scenery and the the schooners that we have. But what is the outside world? Us. How does the outside world see us for a schooner festival? What's happening out there? What's happening out there is that all year long, sailors in vessels like this all over um, look forward to coming to Gloucester for this event. Uh, this is a real highlight. Um, like I said, it's one of the, the biggest na events nationwide. Um, there are only two on the East Coast, Gloucester and the Chesapeake Race, that represent this kind of gathering and the kind of opportunity to get together and um, and gam up with other schooners and compete a little bit, but to, to share the camaraderie and and, uh, and the seamanship that goes along with maintaining and sailing these vessels. Mm -hmm. So now, what is the purpose of, of um, schooner adventure? Like, what what are the daily duties here? Is it preservation? Uh, is it sailing? Is it dealing with the tourism industry? It is. Um, our our principal mission is is preservation and education. Of course, we want to keep this craft alive to represent all of the history that she does. But education is central to our mission, whether that's education for youth programs or whether it's educating visitors who come to Gloucester about the significance of vessels like Adventure and the fisheries history in the history of this region. Very cool. So I want to ask um, Phil and Ricka about uh, hauling on some lines. So Phil and Ricka, could you talk about what you do as crew and, and pulling up the mainsail? and? All right, well, the, the funnest part, for sure, is hauling on the lines and setting the sails and uh, sailing her well. It takes a, it takes a team. Mm -hmm. uh, ten of us can get this boat uh, up and running, um, and it, that, that teamwork is very special. It builds during the season. Mm -hmm. um, we're real proud of each other in what we do. Um, so that, that's the fun part. 
I never have to go to a gym. That's great. Too. <laughs> it's a good workout. Yeah. <laughs> we also we also do the heavy lifting of maintaining this historic treasure. Um, and on some sailboats, that's just kind of drudgery because you're only doing it so you can sail. Well, we are preserving a historic treasure. And so doing that work, uh, we take extra pride in it and uh, it has extra value to us personally. And so where does that passion come from? Like how do you both get involved? Is it a love for sea from, from a long time ago or did you happen upon this? Uh, I honestly happened upon it a couple of years ago. I, it was sort of my version of like running away and joining the circus. Um, so, you know, and I just kind of fell in love with sailing. I knew nothing about boats or sailing or anything. And it just, uh, it's become a passion of mine. And I'm actually pretty close, close to getting a captain's license soon. So oh, I'm excited geez. about that as well. Thank you. Yeah, there's so many opportunities for young people when they can um, get on a schooner, they can live on the schooner. Um, and they get experiences that they never would have happen, had before. Plus, there's there's this way of uh, moving forward uh, in in the schooner world too. Uh, yeah, a lot of it, you know, it takes a lot of hard work, and uh, some people aren't meant for it. So some people will hop on and have it be just a summer job, and then some of us will hop on, and it's a uh, it's a lifelong thing that you, yeah. it just sticks with you. So, right, so what you do you think happened, Rika? Like when it was like, when did it turn into a love? Oh, um, so I was sailing with uh, a different company and I was only supposed to stay for their summer season. And uh, at the end of that summer season, I called my mother up and I was like, uh, I'm not coming home. <laughs> and she was like, what do you mean you're not coming home? And I was like, I'm a sailor now. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it just kind of, I mean, you don't really think about it until you think about having to go back to land. And then you're just like, no, I can't go. So, so it must mean great. a lot to just be part of the adventure crew. Um, it it's really is. Crew. And, uh, you know, the community is so great uh, with adventure. So it's not like a lot of other tall ships where you just show up and they're like, oh, cool, it's a neat ship. And then you leave. It's, uh, you know, it's part of this town and this history and people really take a pride in it, which is refreshing. Right. Well, let's bring Robert Wheeler in. Yes. Robert's the captain this year. Robert, come on. Sure. Come on in. How are you, Robert? Um, Hi. That's your good, camera. Good. All right, How Robert, are you guys? you're captain Great. this year, adventure, yes. and you're from Austin, Texas. I'm from Texas. Yes, you're from Texas. Yes, I'm from Texas. Yeah. And uh, but but uh, I live now in. We're just moving to Indianapolis, so so uh, I've been out of Texas for a little while. Yeah. Um, as much as you can be out of Texas. So you've been and in the schooner world for a while. I this I was thinking about. It's kind of I been doing it professionally for close to 20 years amazing and uh and i've been involved in traditional sale uh for a bit longer than that yeah and so robert do you have a story for us story. from your from your uh, schooner schooner uh, days well, or maybe something from adventure or well i adventure is is fabulous i've been following the program for for a long time and all of us do um, I do, you know, there's, I have experience with this race that we're about to do. And, uh, Tell and, us about and, that. Well, you know, it's, it's pretty special. And this time I get to be the captain of adventure. And uh, all the times that, that I was participating in on other vessels, adventure was being restored. And, and so everybody was looking forward to it. And I was on uh, board. I was invited to be the uh, sail tactician on the other Gloucester fishing schooner that has entered in the race, the American Eagle, with my good friend John Foss. And, uh, and so I said, sure, I'll come on, be the sail tactician. And uh, so I get there and, you know, typical with John Foss, you know, you like to have a cup of coffee and a piece of pie. And I said, well, all right, what do you want me to do? And he goes, you stand over here by me and don't touch a thing. <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> so I just told him stories all the whole day. <laughs> do, do you were the entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> so now what does a race actually entail? How large is the crew? Um, our crew, we have a crew of 10. Yep. And we're going to supplement with that with a few, bringing in some help. You know, yeah. she's, she's a, it's a very large rig for, for only four sails. Right. Um, and she's, She's a, it's a very large rig, and so we're hoping to have a successful day. And, and for us, successful is to go out and uh, display the, the skills and uh, traditions of traditional sail um, 
and and to put on a good show is is you know um, to to me the outcome is not as important as the participation and getting in there and uh, and and showing uh, you know just there's going to be a lot of vessels and they're it's so nice to get them all together in uh, in one place and then sail uh, you know and so so it's more of a uh, it's more of an exposition of sail than than but but there are people here in Gloucester who take the race part a right lot more I mean than adventure right. one last year <laughs> 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 <He's great laughs> hold on a minute <laughs> yes. last three years in a row as a matter of fact right last three years in a row adventure yeah. has won the Esperanza Cup right yes so yeah. um, I, I don't know so, yeah <laughs> but but uh, but you know just the display is a wonderful tradition and part of of what the event and the yeah. weekend is. And folks can come down to Adventure and right. this weekend and they can get on the boat and they can have a deck tour. We're having deck tours tomorrow. Yeah. They're starting at 10. Everybody come down and, and see what, what we're all about and uh, we'll tell the story and we'll have displays here on the dock. We'll, you know, there's gonna be activities, and lots yeah. of things to do. Yeah. Uh, we're really hoping for a good uh, turnout and we just really like to be able to tell the story to the public. Right. It's a great story. Really Adventure is one of the great stories of Gloucester. So, yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Our, yeah. yeah. Well, is. thank you, crew of Adventure, Robert, Ricka, Phil, and <laughs> and Stefan. Thanks for being on Now We're if Here. People want to learn more about Schooner Adventure. How can they do that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. www.schooner-adventure.org. Schooner-adventure.org. Yeah. Our yes. Facebook page. Yeah. Well, good and, places yeah. To go. Yeah. and you'll be sailing up into what September in September you'll be, you'll be having we'll some be community sailing, sales yep we'll be into into uh, yeah. late September great so people so, still have a chance yeah. to come down and sail an adventure it's a wonderful trip it's a great evening yeah. great sunsets yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for being our guest thanks, thanks, thanks so much thanks. good luck good uh, luck at the sale this weekend thank, thank you. you cheers for all you do we really appreciate it thank you thanks for being on well, Schooner Adventure. Yeah. I mean, even even coming down to the pier and taking a look at the boat, it's um, it's so impressive, and it'll, there's been so much work done by the people here in Gloucester to restore the vessel, which is also extraordinary. And you can get the story of not only the preservation but also the history of adventure. Yeah, and this is spectacular. If you have a chance, come on down. It's between right where Maritime Heritage Gloucester is. Just go down that pier here. You can actually see all sorts of schooners, including the adventure and the Ardell, and I think the story is back here too from Essex. Well, don't forget the Lannan. And then of course here of we course have the other Lannan. signature schooner here too. <laughs> Heath, come on, we've got Heath Which is the Thomas Ellis. E. Lannan, and joining hey, us is Ellis. Captain Heath. Heath Ellis. How are you, bud? Thank thanks you for so much for joining us. Welcome. Uh, thanks for having so, me. So Heath is the captain of the schooner Lannan. I am. Thomas yeah. E. Lannan. How's the season been? The season's been great. We uh, started out a little wet like everybody else, but yep. once July hit, uh, we've been non-stop so it's been great. So what does the Landon have um, scheduled throughout this weekend? So we're running trips this afternoon we have a couple of trips sunset sail uh, afternoon sail Sunday we have uh, we start at a one o'clock sail and we have a 3.30 sail uh, and then a 5.45 sale and yeah. an 8 o'clock fireworks sale. Right, wow. right, right. Back wow. at it early for the race. So you, are you are the tickets still available for those sales? Tickets are available for the daytime and sunset sales, the fireworks and the race. Uh, we are all sold out for that. So. Wow. Wow. Does that happen every year? I mean, that must be a big Yeah. Yeah. Big, it's yeah. something we usually sell out, you know, a yeah. little ahead of time. It's a lot of our race um, passengers just come year after year. So yeah. it ends up being maybe like 10 spots for new people every year. Right. The rest are just all repeat customers. Yeah. So I want to know, so, Heath, like what does this weekend mean to you and your family? Um, this weekend is just, you know, it's a schooner weekend and yeah. being one of the host schooners it's you know just an amazing thing to have so many boats come in and sail around uh, we did a, a great little uh, schooner rendezvous last night we called it yeah um, what was that all about so that was just a last minute idea that harold and i kind of came up with about going out and setting anchor and raising the sails up hauling the anchor and racing from anchor uh, wow and then harold wrote up the rules which we all broke uh, <laughs> and then we had a great little race we um we kind of ran out of wind at sunset so we um 
we may or may not have finished it, it, yeah. <laughs> it, uh, it was not a photo finish, but it was a great time. So, the, you know, the camaraderie of all the other schooners in town, yeah. everybody's willing to participate and do things right. like that. We right. had like six or seven schooners out sailing last night. Yeah. Today, the harbor will be full of sail. Tomorrow, everybody will be out. So it's just an exciting weekend. It's bittersweet because it's kind of the end of the summer. Mm -hmm. True, so, true. Um, yeah. But it's, uh, it's a great event. Yeah. So for folks who don't sail, um, can you talk a little bit about the the relationship that a sailor has with the wind and the boat? Sure. Um, you kind of got to be, you know, you either love the love it or you don't kind of thing. So, it, you know, it's part of most sailors and you start getting away from the ocean and you, you notice that you're not near it anymore. Um, you always know which way the wind's coming from. Before, mm -hmm. You know, it's... Uh, but yeah, it's it's definitely... I've been on the water since I was born, so right. it's it's something I've always loved and loved mm -hmm. doing, and you know. And and you've been in the news lately for your little seagull friends. <laughs> you knew this was oh, coming. Oh, right? you knew this was coming. We yeah. couldn't not do it. We yeah. could not do it. Officially, the seagull guy is what I was called the other the day. By, uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so back, so backpedal, so walk so us through. So tell us, them. tell us a story because so, yeah. honestly, I really like seagulls. I think they're special. I don't see them as pests, and when I saw the article about the seagulls in the globe i just was so happy yeah so it's it's definitely you know i think there are some pesty ones i think of the course. ones at the beach the ones at the beach that go out grab that they can be aggressive and get food yeah um, downtown grabbing on 10 know? pound island um and it's six years ago he started landing on the back of the boat and so we started you know giving him a couple snacks and he's missing a claw on his foot so he's easy to identify huh. um and he just kept coming so we kept feeding him um after about a month he let us pick him up and then for five years I worked on him getting on my shoulder and Aww. just he needed to be comfortable. And so he comes back year after year and we'll sail right till Columbus Day weekend and that's our end for the season. And he's usually here for that. And then usually the third or fourth sail in the beginning of the season, he shows up and he kind of gives me this look like, where you been? <laughs> but it's good <laughs> yep. to see him, you know, I'm always really to see him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's becoming kind of part of our new marketing campaign and right. Right. are you getting yeah. are you getting yeah, folks yeah. on the boat it's like here's a gecko gecko now yeah, you got yeah. one <laughs> there you go it's been uh you know not something we saw coming but it's you know it's great people love it you know it's a great little you know thing for the the people visiting Gloucester to see that yeah, all, all seagulls aren't, you know, these no, evil I know, birds that are going to steal your lobster rolls. Yeah, yeah. or your wallet. Remember yeah. that story yeah. a couple <laughs> years ago? <laughs> yeah. So. That was honestly one of the great stories of all time, that seagull coming down and grabbing the guy's wallet and getting My off the My bird just the takes the box. cash and leaves the wallet, so he's <laughs> <laughs> we're training yeah. him up a little bit. Yeah. What's your favorite part of, uh, of Schooner Festival? Um, the start of the race. Uh, it's just real exciting. So there'll be, I think we have around 25 schooners or so coming. Uh, that number fluctuates with weather and people you know, get hung up. So you have all these big schooners and the way a schooner race starts is it's a running start. Everybody's coming to the same spot at the same time. Yeah. So you wanna be upwind. If you're downwind on the other boats, they block the wind. Uh -huh. So all these schooners are trying to be going as fast as possible and to be in the exact same spot of the race at the exact same time going full speed so it's just a really um controlled chaos yeah, huh? it's, yeah. it's well, definitely got right? some levels of chaos yeah. um everybody's gonna try and be safer than win this race yeah so there have been some you know bumps um some mishaps yeah some mishaps yeah. it's you know but That's the key episode. is and what you know we all emphasis at the captain's meeting is safety over you know winning this race so mm -hmm. give way don't you know don't take risks to win this race but even with that said, it's still everybody, everybody's competitive. They might say they're not, but they all want to win. And mm -hmm, it's, you mm -hmm. know, every boat's doing the best, you know, the fastest they can do to get to that mm -hmm. spot. So what category is Lannan in? Is it in the, the second? In the medium, medium size, size? The middle, yeah. the middle class, um, us in the Ardell, and about five or six other schooners. The Hindu is coming up from Pete Oh, Town. great, yeah, the Hindu, um, that's a nice boat. The When and If is coming down from Salem. Um, yeah. Both, both those boats are Alden, you know, schooners in there. Yeah much yeah. newer designs than Harold's in mind. So mm -hmm. um, the Hindu is going to be tough to beat. There's another going to Tyrone that's going to be tough to beat. Uh, but we've beat them before. We have one. So we, you know. Yeah, these are your home we waters. We can win. That's right. We know a few <laughs> tricks. Um, so we'll do our best to win. That's for sure. Yeah. So do you have a tactician on board for the I sale? Do. I do. Um, I have one of my cousins who sailed with me uh, when he was younger. And then he was a manager at West Marine up in town here. Mm -hmm. um, he's... 
he's my tactician, but he, uh, he's good. <laughs> <laughs> Last year we were two minutes early, so he's oh, yeah. wasn't that good. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and Heath, before you go, I did want to bring up um, your mother Kay, who was a beacon of the community and a great philanthropist and fundraiser and involved in, in all things nautical here too, not just nautical, but um, you know, Cape Ann all over. And I just want to ask how the event went this year uh, to raise money for a scholarship fund and how right. are things going on that yep. front? So yeah. the event went great. We had a good turnout. We had a nice night. Um, the Adele and I both, he comes over to our dock and we do like an hour and a half sale. And then we come back to the Gloucester House restaurant and do a big dinner spread. Uh, with a live auction, an online auction. So we gave out five $3,000 scholarships wow. this year to local kids going into the hospitality and tourism uh, industry. That's so fantastic. So 15000 this year. The That's last amazing. few years we've given out um, so total, we've given out over thirty-two thousand dollars in Incredible. three years. So awesome. This year, we raised another around twenty thousand or so. So, we, you know, we're just gonna keep giving it away. We're not trying to build an endowment. We're just gonna keep doing this event and try mm -hmm. and get the community mm -hmm. support. And as long as we can, we're just gonna give it to the kids and you know help help promote this industry, which really you know. This is where Gloucester seems to be going is the tourism industry. Yes. So yes. unfortunately, the fishing industry is just not you know not profitable anymore for the right. fishermen so right. uh, to reinvest in the kids that are, you know we're giving this money to are just you know they're all great kids they all you know are really you know deserve it and it's nice to you know be able to give something back in my mm -hmm. mom's name mm -hmm. so. very cool it's wonderful awesome thanks for all that work yeah I yeah. appreciate your time. You have a great week. Right. Yeah, have a great for week. Me on. Check out Thomas yeah, Evans. Schooner Schooner.org, yeah. Facebook, yeah. Instagram, all that good stuff. We love and, uh, seagulls. I yeah, love seagulls. We love seagulls. <laughs> and, uh, you can follow Paul. He's got his own Instagram page. Oh, now. does he? Of he does. Yeah. Paulie Five Toes. Yeah. So <laughs> Paulie Five out. Toes. I'm putting and, uh, it on my <laughs> phone right away. You guys have a great weekend. Thanks, Todd. Uh, there you go. He fell us from the Thomas E. Landis Schooner. They still have room if you want to get on sometime this weekend. And Alana, we'll see you way up next. And we also. We have Elizabeth Carey coming up next. But I want to. I just want to just bring focus for just a minute to these beautiful mugs that were made by Cynthia Curtis's studio and uh, 1623 mugs and thank you so much Cynthia beautiful. Curtis's studio. Uh, Corey's a left-handed drinker so he's like. Is there anything better than rum in the morning Maureen? No. I have water. I have Silver water. rum. <laughs> Maureen, right out of her purse. So, all right, who's next? All right, we've got Elizabeth Carey coming on from Discover Gloucester. Elizabeth, thanks. Come, come right up. Yeah. So, did I hear there's rum in those uh, coffee mugs? Uh, no. <laughs> are you sharing? No, are you look, sharing, look please? it's really warm. Three straws, okay. three straws. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello. How well, are you, Elizabeth? A, I am great. Yeah. I mean, look at this. I know. Like, it's spectacular this is a, weather. Yeah. Picture perfect. So you made sure that the weather was perfect Indeed. this weekend because that's your job in Gloucester. Calls. I have a couple of, you know, I, I know some big guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, Elizabeth, you're the executive director of Discover Gloucester, and that's a um, designate, does Destination, Destination Marketing, Marketing Organization. Organization. That's a so, mouthful. Just move Everyone this has out trouble having them. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that I was going to yeah. have one of those in this show. It's used white um, rum. Okay, go and ahead. And for the city of Gloucester. So tell us a little bit about your role in all of the the work here for Schooner Festival. So I am in charge of making certain that we market Gloucester as a destination that is enchanting and wonderful and filled with opportunity and activity. So um, travelers get, get to see what we're doing. Um, I make sure the word is out. Um, this summer, we were grateful. We were very, very blessed to have a lot of press in the Globe, a Yankee Magazine, uh, the Wall Street Journal. So my job is to get the word out and make sure that people spend their time and their money and their energy here. Yeah, so the Schooner Festival is one of the great festivals in Gloucester. Indeed it is. And did I hear that it was voted the best of best festival in the North Shore? It did. Um, North of North Shore Magazine yeah. uh, picked one of two events, one of two festivals this year in 2019, as the best festival to attend. Which is very cool. And it was this one. It is this it's one. Fabulous. Yeah. And it hasn't yeah. even begun yet. I know. So it was I a know. 2019 award that yet has yeah. to be um, experienced. So <laughs> what does that tell you? <laughs> Tells you a lot about all the work that goes yes, into this and, um, and, and, the, and the fun of it and the beauty of seeing all the schooners out. And it just goes to our history, right? It goes to the history. I will of tell you, I history. was at the Riverfest last weekend. Mm -hmm. um, another great another event. Great event. Another great another event. Another great we were, event. We were just yeah. blessed. And they were supposedly about eleven thousand to fifteen thousand people that attended. Yeah. I was in the. I was there with a booth, um, uh, d giving away Discover Gloucester guides and some brochures and maps. And the the hottest brochure on my table 
was the Schooner Festival brochure. Yeah. So that lots and lots of people said, oh, we have to do this, or we do, we do it every yeah. year, we can't miss it. So it's yeah. great for us. It's um, I think a lot of times people think Labor Day is sort of the end of the summer. Uh, I like to believe that this is the beginning of an opportunity for us to continue to market Gloucester. So yeah. we have a lot more happening in September and October. Okay, tell us a little mm. bit about what's happening. Oh, dear. What's uh, coming up? Well, lots of live music. Um, that we we I think that's important that Gloucester continues to promote some of those things that people don't know about. Um, at Cape Ann Museum, um, the Winslow Homer exhibit, Amazing which exhibit. is splendid, beautiful, um, breathtaking, um, and that's um, through December first. So I think people forget that we have a lot to offer beyond the summer season, mm -hmm. and I like to think that the festival is the beginning of that marketing opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, th there's always something going on yeah. up here. There's, honestly, all through the year, That's it's right. worth coming up in the winter time too. It's um, in these shoulder seasons, uh, uh, and and restaurants need um, business, and you know the reason why we do so well in the summertime is allows these restaurants to stay open. And That's exactly so, right. so give us another o overview of some other things that you're doing to market uh, Gloucester to outside. Sure. Of, um, so I think one of the things that here. we assume people come by car or by plane or by train, uh, but last year and this year we have created a VIP boaters package because what's so interesting and amazing is that we're surrounded by water on all sides. Mm -hmm. And I think we forget that there's a lot of transient boaters that come here and want a vacation and spend the weekend or spend the week. So uh, we were pleased to create a welcome package to all the boaters. And I check with the Harbor Master frequently and there's never been a city mooring that was not rented throughout this summer. And that's between 600 and 800 boater captains and crew that come up to Gloucester so yeah. um, so we, we try to make sure we cover all of our bases from uh, every transportation um, you know that's that's available to us right, right right I mean certainly the water is just a great way to go I know that Greg and I will sail sometimes we sail up to Maine and that's a big part of our of our experiences together is just heading into these little places and right. picking up a mooring and exploring. So uh, we don't have to pick up a mooring here, because we <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's so important when mm -hmm. you're you know heading up the East Coast to be able to pull into um, a beautiful place like this, and then you have access to the rest of Cape Ann from here. Rockport doesn't have a lot. That's right. That's but right. Gloucester certainly does, yep. and you yep. can get over to Rockport in an Uber if you mm -hmm. wanted to, or take the train, take so the bus. True. Uh, I'll tell you that the um, the people that are renting moorings for this event um, are all the way south, of, as far as North Carolina, South Carolina, and as north as Nova Scotia. So um, we're getting a lot of people from near and far. And uh, my office is in, is in the Harbor Masters building, and I'll tell you, I see lots of boaters coming in, and it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, they come from all over the world mm -hmm. by boat, mm -hmm. and they're ready to experience and see and and enjoy everything we have. Well, this is offer. a boat town, that's for sure. Yes, you can We're feel getting it, it all this weekend. <laughs> yeah. Well, congratulations right. for all the work you've done. You, it's been pleasure. an amazing summer. Let's roll right through into fall. Keep it going. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's keep go. it going all winter. Let's ride that Absolutely, way. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Love thanks it. for all the work that you're doing on, on behalf of the city and, and, do, and bringing tourists here and bringing other people here. It brings money here. I've got it the best gets job to our in the world. Economic bottom line, it's so important to our communities. I appreciate you recognizing that. Thank you. Thanks, Terry. Discover Gloucester. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for joining right. us. That was fun. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Cool. Yeah. I know. So anyway, yeah, Another Gloucester, we bit. are kind of riding a wave right now. You can feel it this year. Yes. Uh, I, you felt the tourism season kick up the last few summers, and uh, but now it, it just feels more impactful. You see more uh, water traffic for sure. The beaches are always killing it, but downtown is, seems like it's doing a lot better than it has in years past. I mean, really, yeah. just, uh, you know, the chamber is doing a great job with yeah. their uh, block parties, and tonight is one of them. Of yeah. course, later on is the mayor's reception. That's a ticketed event that's going to be down here on the pier and at Maritime Gloucester, but the, um, the block party is tonight, and there's just an amazing amount of activity this weekend. Um, and our next guest is, must be Emily. Yeah, speaking of amazing uh -huh. seasons, hi, Emily. <laughs> Hey, Douglas from Cape Ann Whale Watch. How are you? Good. Thanks How are for you? joining us. Thanks for having me. 
Yeah, so so the whales. Oh my goodness. So tell us a little bit about what's happening out there. On yeah, the what, a, what a year. <laughs> they, it's been incredible, it really has. Um, they've been very close to shore, which makes you know everyone's life a little bit easier. Um, they've been feeding on pogies this year, which obviously there's abundant an abundance in Gloucester. Um, so it's, it's just been incredible. Yeah, now Emily also is the events coordinator for the Elks, am, which yes. of course sits <laughs> right on Bass Rocks. I mean, it's, it has so the best view of any Elks view. in the world. Right, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Everywhere I turn. <laughs> yeah. And so Emily and I work closely together on a lot of events, yeah. and I was having lunch at the Elks. I mean, this is early this summer, and literally the whales are right Just, off yep. Bass Rocks, yep. like right Incredible. there. Incredible. Have a drink, watch the whales. <laughs> For real. Like, is, so is this something to be worried about? I don't think so. I think it's just, again, the food. Um, that's why they come up here um, this season. And it, again, it's just been, it's been. Good. Yeah, so I'm wondering if there's like a misconception because they're coming up for the seals, but is it the seals that are coming up for stripers and pogies and whatnot and they're. I, I really. Yeah. It's Let a, me check on that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of whales are we seeing out there so uh, we close see to the coast? Humpbacks, finbacks, minkies. Um, we occasionally see white-sided dolphins. I think there was a trip a few few weeks ago that they actually saw them. So. Yeah, we heard, I heard there were dolphins out yesterday yeah. too. Yeah. So now normally, how far would you would venture out to to spot whales? So in previous years, we've had to go miles off Gloucester down to you know the Cape Cod area. Past Provincetown. So, right, right. So you know at that point you spend more time traveling than watching the whales. So mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they've been so close to us this year we've been able to spend much more time watching yeah. and, and things like that so mm -hmm. can i ask a, a weird thing here too oh boy. do you think because of the shark attack on cape cod is one of the reasons why more people are going to cape ann instead because i just want to like i, I so. think that <laughs> boat has been crazy yeah, this year yeah and tourism has been nuts and i think that might be one of the reasons why people are sort of discovering the other cape in right, massachusetts right, right. yeah you know? i mean there's been so much foot traffic too which i mean like you said maybe more people are attracting now to this area yeah have so. you felt that impact at all where it's just been what we're having a great season My, now, last year there were a lot of whales too but. at this point i think that we could fill five boats if we had them you know wow. what i mean no but kidding. it's it's just just been crazy with the amount of people in Gloucester so yeah because I remember even just last year just going out to salvages yeah. or yeah off 10 pound and we were in it was like is that the a amount of like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah you don't have to go far anymore right, so they cut down right. on fuel costs yes yeah that's a big so that's good that, that my dad's happy about that yeah, right. <laughs> tell us a little bit more about the whales that you're seeing and um, do you have a favorite that you so see so the humpbacks are definitely yeah. the fan favorite um, yeah. they're the ones that you know do all the activity they you know they breach they 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 are the ones that you know the customers come here to see um finbacks are very large minkies are a little bit smaller and don't do so much of you know the show that the humpbacks mm -hmm. do so mm -hmm. So folks who are out in the water mm -hmm. and the schooners coming in, mm -hmm. the whales are going to be around. And Do you take any special precautions when you're out on the water and especially yeah, getting close to yeah, them? Yeah, there's certain perimeters, you know, that they have to, guidelines that they have to abide by. Um, so our captain, you know, is very cautious of, of the guidelines that we right. have to go by. Right. So what are some of those guidelines? Um, to be honest, I'm not quite sure of the exact, mm -hmm. you know, distance that we have to keep, but... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, because that's really important. Yeah. That's really I, right. important. I mean, if it, you know, when they, you yeah. know, we're, we're just idle and a whale comes right next to us, um, not much that we can Yeah, there's not much you can do. Um, and <laughs> so what are the big spots? So they're out in front of uh, the Elks and on Atlantic. And are there any other areas where you can really see them from the water? So the nice thing about Gloucester is that we're in between the two feeding grounds. So there's Selwagon Bank and there's Jeffrey's Ledge. So because we're in between both those feeding grounds, it just kind of makes for, you know, a nice area for the whales to kind of migrate to. And then, you know, it's equal distance for us to, you know, if they're up on Jeffrey's Ledge, that's great. If they're down on Selwagon Bank, that's great too, because we're, you know, equal distance from both, so. Mm -hmm. Interested. So now how long does your season last? So we go until the very last weekend of October. Uh -huh. so, wow. Yep. So, so that's straight through late. the fall. Yep. That's that's really late yeah. um, to have it out there, but well, you figure the water's warmest right. now, right, right? For the next four weeks right. or so. Well, you start it early in the season. So we too, start. Right? Yep. So we start in April, usually the second Saturday, second or third Saturday of April. We only do Saturdays in April, and then um, starting in May is when we we do every day. Wow. Yeah. Now, do you have to get back to your other job I now? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for, for hanging out. Yeah, for, yeah, that was fun. Help you with that. Right, yeah, thanks and congrats so on a great season, yes, too. Thank you. Yeah, I'll see wonderful. you shortly. <laughs> sure. That's great. Yeah. Thank you, Emily. Emily Douglas from Cape Ann Whale Watch. You can learn more right at capeannwhalewatch.com, folks. So um, that was awesome. Yeah, I, 
I'm not joking when I'm telling you that I was literally on Bass Rocks and a whale was here to there, right there. Like it's it's pretty amazing this year. They're all over the place. Uh, you can practically touch them, and they, we've seen a lot of people just taking videos with their phones off Magnolia, off Manchester, off Rockport, uh, and just different spots where we're seeing pods of dolphins, yep. whales nuzzling right up to boats. Um, and if you see a uh, fish popping out of the water, it's probably a good sign that a whale is going to be coming up. So don't get too close to those. There you go. And speaking <laughs> of fish, safety now, right? So speaking of safety. On cue, we have to right. go to the assistant harbor master now. We have the assistant harbor master, Chad. It's a high ranking official here in the city. Come on Assistant on. harbor master, Chad Johnson. <laughs> What's up, brother? Hey, Hello. Hello. Chad Johnson. Hi, Chad yeah. Johnson. Welcome. Thanks for doing this, kid. Great Thanks to for having see me. You. Yeah. I'm probably going to have you hold this okay. just so we get. So, Chad, up. we just spent like 40 minutes talking about how crazy it's the summer season's been. Much more boat traffic, it feels like. A lot more tourists this year. So, how's it been on the water for you guys to handle? It's been good. We've had a good summer. We've been busy. We've been uh, sold out of our city moorings every weekend. Yeah. For the first time since I've been doing this, wow. we've sold out every single weekend. The weather's been a plus since. Um, yeah fiesta till today the right. weather's been right. beautiful Perfect. we've locked out haven't had yeah. any full washout weekend so right. we're locked out there um knock on wood we haven't had any major safety uh incidents on the water you know right. it's just mm -hmm. everything normal so now with this weekend right you know we're kicking off schooner festival what yeah. safety precautions are you guys taking and what people to take yeah, this well, is so important that everyone's out there for the race and you know heath was telling us that the the boats are all coming to the line at the same time and um, yeah so it's it's a busy weekend we invite a lot of schooners from all over the east coast to come up here and ex display themselves and race for the mayor's cup which is a fun time you have a little friend on you Oh. Uh, he always gets a seagull. You get a yellow jack. Yeah, that's, but it's, that's yeah, about right. Sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, there's, um, these schooners are big. Uh, 122 right. foot adventure yeah. Yeah. under full sail. They don't just stop and maneuver like a 21 foot center console. Right. Um, so what we'll do is um, no anchoring in the inner harbor. You know, like we let people do for Fiesta and those type of events for the parade of sail Sunday morning, and uh, give these guys a clear path. So they'll leave, come around Fort Point, mm -hmm. sail by the boulevard, and uh, Daisy now will be narrating each ship as it comes by. Yep. And then they'll take a left, head up towards Stage Point, Stage Fort Park, have a cannon salute there, and then swing back around into the Inner Harbor. And then they're in a little bit of a hurry because a lot of them are here for charters. They'll drop some folks off, pick some folks up, then they get to head out for the race. Um, we do... Um, most boaters are pretty cogniz cognizant of uh, you know large boats, mm -hmm. stay away from them. But yep. we'll, we'll be busy keeping small boats. Uh, we'll keep kayakers and paddle boarders away from them. Yeah. And um, safety's paramount. You know these guys are all professional mariners that are racing these things. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's not them we worry about more so than the um, you know the participants that are coming to watch. Yeah, the the, and, the bystanders and the, yeah. the folks and in the boats. We expect a good crowd. Um, the weather's supposed to be gorgeous tomorrow, right into uh, the Parade of Lights, which is a fun event. Mm -hmm, really good. Um, right into the band on the boulevard to the fireworks, which is uh, during the fireworks, we'll have a safety zone, same as the uh, 3rd of July, about 300 yards off of uh, Stage 4 at the Cannon area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where they'll light them off from. We'll keep boats out from there. Um, fireworks is always a good, pleasant crowd on the water. It's always a little bit of uh, congestion as soon as the fireworks are over mm -hmm. with. You know, boats are coming in here, heading up the river. Um, mm -hmm. We'll maintain it the best we can. We'll do a good job. We uh, got good partners. We'll have Coast Guard out assets out there with us, along with uh, Gloucester Police Department. They do a good job. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a question about um, the article that was in the paper this week about boat safety and also a boat accidents. So um, some of the 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 boat accidents are people who die uh, and drown they did they weren't wearing uh, life jackets and so uh because the majority of the percentage i think it was like 84 percent um, of people who die aren't wearing life jackets um and you get on a boat you don't really want to have a life jacket on because it's too cumbersome you know they're there but what do you have to say about that because it is a safety issue when you're out on the water especially in these small boats and children, of course, have right. to wear them. But what about adults? Absolutely. We encourage everyone to wear them, especially in the smaller vessels, um, especially if you're working on the edge of the boat, on side, outside a vessel. And this day and age, they have 
technology where life, the inflatable life jackets yeah, just weigh, something that's they're like very a, small. Yeah. Sometimes they can even wear them around their waist. They're auto inflatable. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of good products out there for, you know, and they're fairly inexpensive for what it's doing. Um, mm -hmm. so, you know, they float, we don't, it saves lives. Um, absolutely, we encourage the wear of all of them, especially on paddle craft. Any paddle craft, we expect you to have it on, mm -hmm. and uh, definitely on the smaller vessels and any vessel where you're working over the side. And you'll notice that more and more people wear them on the regular than you saw five, ten years ago. You see a lot of people out there. Yeah. That's good. It's just and, like putting a seatbelt on. Like, uh, I, you know, I've, been, I've seen those ones that you just kind of wear around your neck, yeah. and it, they're very thin and they're not heavy. They're very light. I didn't know about the belt ones. Those yeah, are kind of great. Those yeah, are great. There's, there's a lot of, yeah. lot of good technology out there auto inflate they're uh yeah. they're very good um obviously we don't want anyone in the to go in the water on accident but if you do yeah it's it's gonna save your life and um, so is, is it a thinking for boat owners to start moving in that direction to upgrade their life jackets and upgrade their safety equipment on a boat because some people have the same life jackets for years and yes. years you know this um yeah you, you're not going to change old habits overnight you know some of the old guys have been doing it forever you're not going to change the habits. Um, Coast Guard regulations are getting stricter on where you can store your life jackets to be ready available. Mm -hmm. And years ago, hey, you just had to have a life jacket for everyone just on board. Show it, right? They didn't really care where it was. Now they have to be ready accessible. Um, so as as time progresses and these statistics come out with what's uh, you know how we're losing lives on the water, mm -hmm. regulations will eventually follow. Um, and that statistic. It, you know, 80% don't have life jackets and the huge amount of um, statistic on, you know, boating while intoxicated. Yes, a lot right. of these incidents Especially. have that. So yeah. if, you know, if you're out there, be sober, be safe and uh, wear a life jacket. Those are great tips. To hey, you don't get the there. designated driver thing for the boat. You always hear that for, you know, on, the, on mainland, but you don't really, it doesn't really get pushed out there. Um, yeah. More and more you're seeing it, you know, yeah. but I, I think the cost of these vessels that people are driving now, yeah, you know, right. just you along with cars and right. where they're going right. and the activity Kid out there. for everything. Exactly, yeah. yeah. People are far more cautious yeah. now. You know, if you're going to spend that kind of money, you got to protect right. a resource. But Chad, I hope you got enough sleep this week, bud, because it's going to be... <laughs> ah, it's going to be a fun week. And yeah, then yeah. after this, it's, you know, we slow into fall. Yeah. And uh, we'll get a lot of boats coming from north, heading south. they got to stick around here until depending on their insurance policy, October 15th, November 15th, mm -hmm. before they can right. cross the southern line. So we will get an influx of uh, late September, early October boats that'll come in and Yeah, that's a great time to fun. be sailing. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah, absolutely. for sure. Very cool, but well, be safe this weekend yourself, man. Yeah. Enjoy absolutely. it. You yeah, know? Thank you so having much, Chad. No yeah. problem. Thanks, thanks for having me. One of my best friends it. is named Chad. I miss him. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> I'm, just, right. well, I'm just thinking about my Chad because, you know, Chad's a, not an everyday name, you know, in some ways. I'm yeah, just like, I love my friend Chad. I've known him since I was eight. I've known him. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Chad. Bud. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Assistant so, Gloucester Harbor Master Chad Johnson. Yeah, what a pleasure for, to have him on. Um, we have also our next and probably our last guest set uh, from Three Sheets to the Wind, Peter Souza and Audie Souza. Oh, yeah. They're going to sing for us. And um, let's welcome them on. Hey, hey. We might have to move this. Oh, okay. Hi, Audie. Hi, how, how are, are you? you? And you're wearing your beautiful <laughs> schooner nice necklace. Schooner necklace on, yes. And Peter, thank you for joining us. Oh, no sweat. We're, we're so excited to have you Glad on. To and you, be here. you just got back from Newfoundland? We did. Three weeks. Yeah. Three weeks all the way up there. Four did Zinnia go miles. with you? She did. Of she course. was a trooper. She's a very good traveler. <laughs> got to see my family. Is that where your family is? that where you're from? Uh, St. Jacques down in Fortune Bay. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. let's, yeah. let's pull this up. So you're going to. Um, you're going to sing something for us. Do you want to set yeah. us up? Sure. Sure. So. This is a, uh, actually it's a shanty and it's uh, usually sung on vessels when uh, ships are coming home, when they're starting to leave the grounds, either whaling or, or shipping, or sometimes fishing, but uh, shanties are not used on schooners very often. So this is called a Homeward Bound Tomorrow Journey. <clears throat> oh, can't you hit? Oh, you, have you, 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 you go ahead and help start. Me? I will, of course. <laughs> oh, have you heard the news, my Johnny? One, One more day. day. We'll 
homeward bound tomorrow. One, one more day, day, only one more day, my Johnny. Johnny. One more day, oh, rock and roll me over. One more day, oh, we're homeward bound tomorrow, Johnny. One more day, we'll leave you without sorrow. One more day, only one more day, my Johnny. One more day, oh, rock and roll me over. One more day, oh, can't you hear the capstan falling? One more day. Oh, can't you hear the old man snarling? One more day, only one more day, my Johnny. One more day, oh, rock and roll me over. One more day, oh, heave and sight the anchor, Johnny. One more day, oh, heave and sight the anchor. One more day, only one more day, my Johnny. One more day, oh, rock and roll me over. One more day, oh, we're bound away to leave you, Johnny. One more day, but I will not deceive you. One more day, only one more day, my Johnny. One more day, oh, rock and roll me over. One more day, only one more day, my Johnny. One more day, oh, rock and roll me over. One more day. Beautiful. Thank you. Yay. Thank you. There's a shanty. That was There's great. a shanty. That's great. I People want to say the last time I heard that was maybe at the dog bar. Yeah. The shanty. Yeah. Well, we're yeah. still singing shanties on Monday yeah. night. Yes. We're at. We're at the uh, rum line on Monday nights, 5.30 to 8.30 every single Monday, except for Labor Day weekend coming up. Yeah. We're going to take a night off. Ellen, Ellen needed a night, so she. she <laughs> <feel> later. Right. <laughs> but we're at, we're at the rum line, and we've had an average of 40 to 60 people joining us every Monday night. That's a fantastic. lot of new faces. That's really cool. Yeah, if and you want an authentic Gloucester experience, <laughs> kids, that is it. Kids, that's it. Kids yeah. are welcome. It's kid friendly. Families, yeah. So 5:30, 8:30 early oh, for great. Monday night. Yeah, nice. yeah, that's so great. So you're gonna come over and sing a song with us? I can. I might be able to do that. <laughs> okay. I have been known to hang out at the rum line here and there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, you've got to make it up upstairs. Upstairs. Yeah, it's before. upstairs. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and we have a great buffet, three different types of selections every yeah, Monday night. Yeah, they do a nice job. What is it about the sea shanty that's so alluring for the two of you? Well, I think sea shanties uh, tell, a, tell a history that you don't hear anymore. It's a, it's a lost part of history, and trying to keep that going has been actually wonderful for all of us uh, because it tells the past. And the other thing about sea shanties is everybody can sing with them. Once you have a chorus going, uh, people just get engaged and they do it and yeah. we've done nursing homes where people haven't spoken in two years and they, they started to sing yeah. right there in front of us it's it, it's something that engages the brain to yeah. do stuff like that but it's uh you know we do stuff in schools we just did a folk festival up in Newfoundland when we were up there um, they play a lot of different types of music up in Newfoundland than we do down here but it was cool yeah we That's had a good fantastic. time Very what, engaging. what got you into doing this originally so for me, I, when I moved to Gloucester, one of my friends said, just so you sing and you're moving to Gloucester, to be bona fide, really, you're going to have to go down. It was Cameron's at the time. And uh, oh, yeah. so I was invited to go down to Cameron's and sing. And I walked in and I've heard so many people over the years say this. It's like church. There's a bunch of people sitting in a room yeah. singing together, but it's sea shanties. So it's like <laughs> there's something about this music. And it makes sense. It brings people together, which it's is coral, what it had to coral. do right. on a ship. They had yeah. Yeah. to unify the crew. And so it still it still does that for people. And when you walk into mm -hmm. that room and you just hear a room full of people who met there in that room singing together in harmony, it's very powerful and very moving. Yeah. And so that I've been going back ever since. That's great. Yeah. That's great. What about you, uh, Peter? For myself, it's been historical. I mean, I, I love music. Um, I just think telling a history is really important because a lot of these large vessels, we do tall ship events. Um, we have a lot of good data 
Uh, we have over 450 songs that we can do in the group together, uh, which is, tells a huge story about the past. Um, I have access to all kinds of friends from England to Scotland to Australia. Uh, we share a lot of stuff. You get to learn a lot of stuff. Um, we, we've just done some amazing things and engaging people in fellowship. It's just an amazing feeling, you know, and it's a, it, it's good for you. It's good for the soul. I was going to ask, where are you finding these songs? And are you, is anyone composing these today? Well, I just finished one about Newfoundland, so I, I played that in the festival up there. And I got another one I just finished about um, rainy day fishing. And that's normal. Yeah. But, um, we had a visit from John Connolly, actually, uh, who is a, uh, a songwriter from England. And he was, he was here, um, and he's writing mu shanty music. Um, and that's, that's current stuff. And he's, he's bringing stuff out of the tradition and then also composing new stuff. So there's um, there's definitely both. It's yeah. a genre. John, John wrote Fiddler's yeah. Green and a bunch of other uh, other incredible songs. Uh, he was over here with Rob Van Sant and Janie Manili, and uh, they spent the day down here and got him on board the adventure and had dinner with him. We started singing in the pub over here, and they were like, wow, this is awesome. <laughs> so, yeah. And we do that. We go into places where we don't even know, and we'll do songs and stuff, and all of a sudden, people start coming over and listen and they stop picking up and singing it's it's a good it's a good thing to do yeah it's know. great well peter souza audie souza thank you so much well, for being you. on now right here. Yeah. i was going to say can you do great. one more but, <laughs> do you yeah, want to do, do one more so you know why don't we thank our crew and then we can ride out with the song yeah that sounds great yeah. okay that sounds well, one great. second peter and audie so yeah we want to thank everyone who made uh this week uh so special for us here at 35th annual schooner festival kicks off right now and goes right through Sunday into Labor Day, so get out and enjoy it. Have fun, be safe. The weather looks great. We gotta thank our crew, Mo. That's right. Let's thank um, our director and auto audio master, Becky Tober, our technical director, Mac, Matt McMakin, floor manager, Alana Horn, and cameras, uh, David Lufkin, and Seamus Swift, and our intern, Haley. Thanks to all the crew at 1623. Uh, you do so much work, and we really appreciate it. Yeah, and you can look for now. We're here coming up in the next month. We might be doing the Mass Motors Pig Roast. I haven't ruled that out yet yes. in September. We're going to be at Hammond Castle for Halloween. Keep your eyes open for that. We'll also be at the Beauport Hotel somewhere in the holiday season, too, and probably the open door around Thanksgiving as well. So uh, we love doing these shows. Yeah, for we you. have a full schedule yeah. coming up. And we learn a ton. We get great guests. We have, like, you know, Peter and Adi today. This was awesome. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was super great. So yeah. thanks to everybody, and we'll see you next time. Adi and, Su and Peter, take it away. So Adi's right. going to do a whoop jamboree. It's a traditional shanties. All right, I guess I can hold that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, a, sh a shanty. The pilot, he looked out ahead, hands on the chains and the heaving of the lead. The old man roared to wake the dead. Come, Come and get, get your oats, me son. Whoop, jamboree, whoop, jamboree. A long tail sailor coming up behind. Whoop, jamboree, whoop, jamboree. Come and get your oats, me son. Oh, soon we'll pass the lizard light. Soon me boys will be heaving in sight. We'll soon be abreast of the Isles of Wight. Come, Come and get, get your oats. Me son. Whoop jamboree, whoop jamboree. A long tail sailor coming up behind. Whoop jamboree, whoop jamboree. Come and get your oats, me son. And then we'll reach the black wall docks. Them pretty young maids will come down in flocks with their short leg drawers and their long tail frocks. Come, come and get your oats, me son. Whoop jamboree, whoop jamboree. A long tail sailor coming up behind. Whoop jamboree, whoop jamboree. Come and get your oats, me son. Oh, then we'll walk down limelight way and all the young girls will spend our pay. We'll not see more till another day. Come and get your oats, me son. Whoop jamboree, whoop jamboree. A long tail sailor coming up behind. Whoop jamboree, whoop jamboree. Come and get your oats, me son. Whoop. Hey, hey, hey. Peter and Audie Souza. Thanks so much. That was really cool. That was great. See you next time, folks. See you. Hey, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs>